All right, so I'm Ryan Brown here with the Cinema Madhouse. I'm at Nightmare Weekend, Richmond, Virginia. Here I'm here. Too. I'm here with yeah. the Kyoto Brothers. How oh, are you yeah. guys doing? Where are the Kyoto Brothers? I'm Stephen yeah. Kyoto. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine. I'm Charlie Kyoto. Edward, nice to meet you. So first off, if you don't mind, am I allowed to ask what what happened to your arm? Were you, were you fighting some clowns? Big clowns. Got yeah. it. You Why should would... see them. Yeah, you, yeah. So so you, they, you mess they, them up. When they shake hands, they really mean it. Yeah, the joy buzzer just uh, went to I got my you. Arm out. Dude, did you get caught with a pizza box or no? No, no. No pizza boxes? I was wearing lingerie, though. Okay. So, my first question, really, for you is being 35 years removed from the movie, what has it been like for you guys to see the resurgence in popularity for Killer Clowns from Outer Space? Oh, it's total surprise. Yeah. Yeah, we're so surprised that the new audiences have picked up on it after 35 years. It's a thrill. It's the dream come true for any artist, any creator, to have something embraced by basically now the whole world is turning on to killer clowns from outer space. And uh, I know you guys, there have been rumors about a sequel for about 34 years now, uh, since the release. Do we have any idea on if there will be one? I know you guys have your title for it uh, that you've what you, stood what by. What have you heard? Yeah. Uh, I've heard that you guys had the title ready to go as Killer Clowns from Outer Space in 3D, is the rumor I've seen. It's a uh, rumor. That's one of the rumors. You know what? Yep. We said 3D because of all the 3D films, a film about Killer Clowns from Outer Space would be a perfect 3D movie. Popcorn coming at you. You know, we haven't devised a paddle ball gag yet. You know, but yeah, the circus is full of 3D gags, so it would be perfect, but you don't see 3D movies anymore. I mean, you could do it in 4D now. You can get the, like the little flower on the clown's chest and have it spray water at the audience from the seat in front of them. Yeah, that popcorn exactly. rain from the ceilings. I mean, that's yeah. a great idea. I mean, you could really just ham it up with a 4D movie now if you want to step into more of it. That would be great. Now, I'd say because of the fans' interest in the property right now, I think the future for a sequel is uh, better than ever before. Yeah. And so while there's nothing officially going on in a sequel mode, we're definitely we always been talking about a sequel. We have great ideas closest thing to a sequel right now is the video game. I was about to actually ask about that. So with the video game coming out, I'm assuming early to mid-2024, uh, we did see a trailer for it at Gamescom. It's a 7v3, kind of in the same vein as Dead by Daylight. How excited for that are you guys? I'm very excited. I played it and I got killed so quickly. I mean, it's really frightening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've never been terrified uh, until you've been uh, cocooned from behind. Yeah, you know, and it's great. We have, we're working with Ilphonic. They, they invented the genre with... Uh, Right, the 13th and Texas Chainsaw, you know, so they're they're just incredible work with the television people. It is, uh, it's going to be a, gonna be a blast, and, and based on that popularity, who knows what the possibility? And I mean, that popularity is expanded to now Universal Horror Nights as well. Uh, you guys have seen some of those going on. You guys have cosplayers coming up to you in clown outfits now. I mean, I really feel like we've got enough momentum here for you guys to pitch a sequel. Well, that's the kind of stuff that helped motivate uh, uh, the interest in, in Killer Clowns. When Universal Studios licensed Killer Clowns for their Halloween haunts down in Orlando and Hollywood, it exposed it to millions of people, you know, and they made a lot of money from it. And money means, you know... There's something, there's something about it. Well, it's an audience that's larger than just the cult status, which is what the film has over the years. But yes. I think with the Funko products, Spirit Halloween, the game, all the product that's coming out now is showing, I think, the, the decision makers that this is larger than a cult film, that yeah, it could we, be a real pop work, culture. We work with MGM Consumer Products, so we have a relationship with them. And you'd be amazed at the products and the ideas they have down the pike coming down. And, and if uh, the fans keep responding and buying the product, it's going to uh, help propel it and, and, and create a desire for more clown, uh, cl more clown original properties that they, they can then spin off into merchandising. Yeah. We had always seen a video game in, 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 the, in, the, hit, in the future of, of Killer Clown from Outer Space, but uh, I'm so glad it's happening now because the technology is so much better. Uh, the game is awesome. The, the clowns are better than ever. They, they, they do stuff that the, the fans are going to love, and uh, we're really excited about it. Yeah, and one of the comp cool components of the game is you know, the 3 by 7 format is you're playing with other people, and, uh, and you can team up as humans or clowns and work together to defeat whoever you're working with. And uh, you know, we're planning to uh, jump online and uh, play with and against the fans. Uh, the, the professional gamers said that they found themselves actually terrified 
being tracked by three or more clowns. I mean, I, I feel like this movie helped spawn a fear of clowns in so many people. Between this and it, it we really did a lot of damage on my generation with clowns. So thank I, you. I thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't approach one for 20 years as a child. <laughs> well, now you know how to kill them. Yeah, now I'll know. And pretty I, much any other I, monster. Yeah, that's how it works out <laughs> And so with the rise in popularity of streaming services as well, and we've seen where some properties have gone to a TV format, do you guys think that might be possible, where you could do an anthology-based season style? That's the grand that's slam. Our preference. That's our preference. We think a motion picture right now in the marketplace, if it has one good weekend, that you're lucky with all the competition. So rather than putting all our efforts into like a one-shot deal, let's do a long... Uh, maybe an eight or ten part series, limited yeah. series, and see how it goes. We've got a lot of story ideas that we could expand on. Yeah, 35 years of clown ideas that are yet to be told. And uh, I don't want to entirely focus on Killer Clowns. As we see from the banner behind us, you guys have done a whole lot more than just Killer Clowns. It was your directorial movie. So yes. what other movies have you done, and what are you the most proud of in those works? Like, if you had a career highlight from anything other than just Killer Clowns. A different category. Oh, a lot of different categories. Like most recently we worked on Marcel, the show with shoes on. Different with from Dean, the stuff that we do. Dean Flasher Camp and Jenny Slate. And uh, Edward was uh, the animation producer and I was supervising animation director. It's a lovely, charming film, quite outside the horror genre. Yeah, and then, you know, quite honestly, it's right. I mean, not only because it's just the most recent thing we worked on, I think it's probably one of the, the right up there with the highlight of my career because just the movie, again, is just so... Such an important little movie. Um, yeah, so all you horror fans out there, don't shy away from Marcel. You should check it out. <laughs> there's no you, blood you, in it, but there's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of tears. Heart. A lot but, of uh, heart. You will, you will shed a tear or two. It's, uh, it's just like a, a wonderful movie. But then like something like uh, Team America, mm -hmm. World Police, with, uh, working with Matt and Trey. No was, movie like it. Yeah, yeah. It, just, uh, it was like nine months of pure hell, but fun. <laughs> You know, fun, laughing every day, yeah. just working with those guys. And then Elf being involved with Will Ferrell and John Favreau on a, a holiday classic, that was a blast. I actually have one of our animated characters um, acting, performing in the same scene as the lead actor. It was really a big treat for us as well. All right, and uh, with the rise in, I'm more of a VFX. How do you guys feel about sticking to your guns and still doing practical pretty much for everything? Practical rules. Um, we can do a lot in practical. We can enhance it with the digital. We like to look at special effects as a, uh, a kit of uh, parts, a tool kit. And we like to use different tools. New tools are available. We'll use them, but we'll always love the practical. It's like mixed media. We do embrace digital compositing and digital effects, but we like to blend it with more practical effects. There's something physical and tangible about traditional effects. The rubber is right there in, uh, on, on the screen. You can sense the texture. You can see the hand of the artist manipulating it. I think that's what resonates with the audience. Yeah, kind of like you can, one of our like company mottos is we don't let the technique define the character. We let the character define the technique. So if for like something like Killer Clowns from Outer Space when it's the clowns, absolutely needs to be practical. But a spaceship going in outer space or race, that's got, you know, that's, the, you know, a digital. It does uh, digital animation, CGI for rays is the way to do it that, the, yeah. today. And could you imagine if we had, if there was CG technology in the 80s when we did the film, now, today, the CG would look like garbage. It would look bad. But our, our, our traditional effects still stand the test of time. And last question for you guys. I just want to go, do you guys have any general life advice for everyone out there? What's your best piece of advice you can give to anyone at home? Oh, You know what? Um, go with your passion. Go with the things that, you know, that uh, scare you and things that make you laugh. Uh, Things that make you feel emotions. Uh, don't lose touch with your emotions. I would say go with that. Enjoy your life in any way that you can. Yeah, I'd say follow your dreams and your passions and follow it. And if you're crossing the street, look both ways yeah. before you cross. Yeah, I was going to say eat healthy and exercise. <laughs> <laughs> and don't trust random pizza boxes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it, and I hope you guys enjoy your weekend here in Richmond, Virginia, and you come back as soon as possible. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's really lovely here. Thank you. so far. We'll definitely come back.